Hey, hey, I am Brett Bivens, and this is Venture Desktop. So what is this? It's definitely not a news show. It's not a podcast. It's basically me looking at all the stuff I worked on over the last week and trying to pull out some learnings from what I'm picking up on the ground as I think about, invest in, and work with companies that are building the future of work, wellness, media, cities, and industry. Those are the five often quite overlapping megatrends that I care a lot about and where I spend most of my time day to day as an investor at TechNexus. It's not long form, but it is a deep dive. So if you're interested in these areas or you're working in these areas as a founder, an operator, or an investor, I think you'll find the next few minutes quite useful. And if you share this with enough people, I might even add some intro background music next week. I'd also love to get your feedback on the content, on the format, on anything. So you can find me on Twitter at Brett Bivens. All right, let's jump in. So this week was very media-centric, audio-centric, and more specifically, Spotify-centric. I wrote about Spotify's business model leverage, and in the process of doing so, came across a bunch of great data and information that helped me gain a deeper understanding of why, as you see here, and as Greg Meffey, the CEO of Liberty Media and chairman of SiriusXM recently said, the ear is under-monetized versus the eye, under-monetized at a scale of 10x by some estimates. Now, Pandora, who is owned by Sirius, has talked a lot about wanting a bigger share of ear in the consumer's audio day. And audio day is an interesting term because it gets you thinking about all of these habitual things we do throughout a day where audio can or does play a role. Getting ready in the morning, commuting, sitting at a desk, working out, cooking. These are places where video doesn't fit quite as well, even though it's much easier to monetize. The reason that the Pandoras and the Spotify's and the Apples of the world, as well as companies coming at it from a different direction like Calm or Blinkist, are being so aggressive and vying for a larger share of the consumer audio day, despite an immature monetization ecosystem, is pretty straightforward. With most emerging content mediums, engagement and attention tends to come before monetization. And engagement, in this case, is growing pretty significantly. This one minute clip from investor Gavin Baker on the Invest Like the Best podcast provides a great example of how he applied this idea to an early Facebook bet and gives us a nice framework for how we might take it and apply it to the world of spoken word audio. So I think Facebook was in some ways the first time I really put that kind of Apple framework where you have a really powerful long term insight into effect. So I looked at Facebook, and it's amazing. This was 2012. The stock had gone down 50% after its IPO. Mary Meeker published her annual slide deck, which is great. I've never met Mary, but wow, has she been important to my career. And she had on her slide deck that the internet, mobile and desktop, they used to break it up, was, was I think, 35% of consumer time spent, 23% of advertising revenue in the United States. And, you know, as a student of history, I know that any time a new format comes out that engages consumers, the advertising revenue always follows with a lag. So radio comes out, a lot of consumer time and attention switches away from newspapers, and it actually takes a long time for the 15 and 30 second radio ads to be standardized, for advertisers to become convinced that there's an ROI. But eventually, in a similar linear fashion, ad dollars move to radio. And then TV comes out. And consumer time and attention shifts probably even more dramatically than it did with radio. The first TV ads were basically repurposed radio ads, and it took a long time for advertising dollars to catch up. So we were living through this with the Internet. And so I was very confident, based on nearly 100 years of history, that that 23% of advertising revenue would go to 36% of that. And then for Facebook specifically... Facebook was roughly 7% of consumers' time spent across all mediums in the United States. And it was just under 4% of advertising dollars. So it was $5 billion in 2012. And so I was very confident, hey, I can underwrite to $11 billion in U.S. ad revenue, just based on that one really simple mental model. And then I could extend that to the rest of the world, which is, you know, a $550 billion ad market, you get to something like, hey, their fair share should be $35 billion. So for podcasts, what does that engagement and that scale of attention look like? Uh, Here's Nikola Korzenko, who's the general manager of PodFund, which is a tech nexus portfolio company, uh, on stage in an interview, giving a really quick overview on where the ecosystem stands. The the latest stats are about 50% of Americans or 140 million 
um, have ever listened to a podcast, um, and 32% have listened in the past month. Um, and a lot of that growth, and it's been growing steadily every every year. And a lot of that growth is actually happening in the like 12 to 24 age group. Um, so it's pretty interesting because I think that the um, the sort of the reputation that podcasting has, I think, is with the, that it's an older audience, but actually growth is happening with younger folks. And so if we go back to the Gavin Baker framework, this idea that monetization follows engagement, um, we can get an understanding of what's actually happening in the podcast space. So becoming more mass market, as Nicola just talked about, um, and as you see here, only 3.9% of audio consumption time is dedicated to podcasts, which you know shows a lot of headroom left to grow, but even, even less than that, 1.5% of the audio advertising market is dedicated to podcasts. So that's what we mean when we say an engagement revenue gap. And you know, we expect that to close uh, pretty drastically over the, over the coming years. Really, I mean, overall, as, as you can kind of see from what I'm talking about, podcasts are becoming a bigger and bigger part of the content experience. Spotify in particular, has done a pretty amazing job capitalizing on that. So they used well-known acquisitions earlier this year of Gimlet Media and of Anchor to spearhead a strategy that's seen podcasts now account for 14% of their monthly active users, growing massively, 39% growth in podcast hours streamed quarter over quarter. Um, and this is great for Spotify because it shifts their streaming mix from one where they're paying music rights holders on a marginal cost basis to one with free content, so podcasts that are broadly accessible, or fixed cost, exclusive, or content that they develop themselves, uh, largely through Gimlet, Gimlet Media. And this is what I mean with business model leverage, being in a position to capitalize on a strong core business and expand into higher gross margin adjacencies. Very few companies have that. Spotify definitely has that. Now to illustrate with a more concrete example, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Global Research estimates that Spotify has a 4% upside in terms of price objective for every 200 basis points that they can shift their streaming mix towards podcasts away from that high cost music streaming. And another 1% to 2% for every few hits that they can create with Gimlet. So large upside there, but it actually doesn't stop there. Um, podcasts, in my opinion, again, are simply the next step in Spotify's gross margin flywheel as Driving more people to spoken word content unlocks pretty interesting emergent platform effects that really set the company apart. As these audio categories continue to blend, podcasts, books, education, wellness, religion, Spotify is upstream from a data perspective of a lot of very compelling consumer subscription expansion opportunities that it can capture via M&A, new product development internally, and an expanded platform approach to close that engagement revenue gap that we've talked so much about so far. This upstream data advantage paired with the enablement of an ecosystem of products in the market that are reacting to new consumer behaviors, also creating new consumer behaviors around audio consumption fully distinguishes pod, uh, Spotify, in my opinion, from its peers. Think about a company like Peloton, cross-sell for Peloton means selling lower margin apparel or in-person boutique classes at one of their locations. For Spotify, it means taking existing, existing customer purchasing behavior around content like meditation, Calm, or audiobooks, Blinkist and Amazon, and bringing that natively into the place where a user already gets their music and podcast, already spends a majority of their audio day. Again, they may do this through M&A or by building their own products, and they'll be able to quickly gain distribution for those new products through that existing customer base that they have, you know, likely providing the same offering for a lower cost than competitors in the market. If Spotify does get more aggressive expanding to these different audio categories, it'd be natural for founders and investors that are active in the space to get concerned, to perk up. We certainly have portfolio companies that would compete with these expanded offerings. I'm actually uh, quite optimistic, however, about what the company's moves would do to the market. I think they'll actually expand the market significantly by accelerating consumer awareness of new forms of audio content creating opportunities for startups to offer a better vertical product for a core base of obsessed users and, you know, in Spotify fashion, begin building their own gross margin flywheel. So that is Spotify and the world of audio. Jumping in now to a yet to be properly named section, we'll call it deep cuts for now, uh, but it's a quick hit section here at the end. You know, I think it's really easy to find new content, you know, we're, we're on these feeds all the time. Twitter top tweets are easy to find. New podcasts are easy to find. New blog posts bubble up. Um, but these things often have a very short shelf life. And so every week this time I'll jump back in, 
pull out some valuable stuff that you may have missed uh, from recently, from a long time ago, whatever it may be. For now, I'll just call this uh, retweetables, rereadables, and re-listenables, which is quite a mouthful. But first up on the tweet side, so this is a tweet from Semel Shaw of Haystack that I mentioned in an article I wrote on startups and reflexivity. Now, building a winning company is, is so dependent on telling the right story so that you can assemble great talent, attract customers, attract capital. The term followability that he uses here to describe founders um, that do this well has become one of my favorites and something that I think about a lot. And it's something we talk a lot about when making investment decisions. So I will fire up a retweet for Semel and then we'll jump back to our rereadable from Bill Gurley. So another thing I wrote this week was about negative churn for consumer SaaS companies. And in doing so, I came back across this piece from Bill Gurley that talks about the 10X Revenue Club, which goes deep into the factors that underlie the companies that can command a strong multiple as they continue to grow. It's a foundational piece to understanding how competitive advantage maps to valuation for software companies and for technology companies. I highly, highly, highly recommend it. And finally, from a re-listenable perspective, we'll go a bit meta since I was talking about audio and podcasts all day. Uh, Closing the loop, check out a podcast from A16Z from earlier this year. It's called A Podcast About Podcasting. Uh, goes deep into the history of podcasts, how it is similar to the early web, adoption and current trends, and then current business models that are developing around podcasts. So I'll leave you with those. Thank you so much for tuning in to this. I mean, this is the first ever episode of Venture Desktop. I look forward to doing this again next week on a completely different set of topics. I promise it'll be less audio centric. If you have any ideas, let me know. Uh, And if you want to stay up to date or send me those ideas, come find me on Twitter. Like I said, I'm at Brett Bivens uh, or head to venturedesktop.substack.com. You can subscribe to this newsletter, get all the links that I go through in the show in your inbox. Thanks again and look forward to seeing you back here next week.